Hey friends, uh, it's been several weeks since we posted, and for those of you who have been following us in the community, uh, you know a little bit about what's happened to us. Um, for those of you that don't, um, two weeks ago, April 18th, Our sweet Ezra went to heaven and it was, it was unexpected. Um, Shocking. And we have, we have been in shock for the last two weeks trying to understand why and even how how this really happened um, he had been sick off and on the week before struggling with pneumonia but we were managing it well at home um, with our nursing care and there really weren't concerns then he just kind of turned corner over the weekend and was needing more oxygen support so we um, ended up being admitted to the hospital and then transferred to a bigger children's hospital and even during that transfer everyone was calm Ezra you know was requiring assistance oxygen support but he was comfortable and listening to Rachel and you know nobody I who am a very anxious mother, had no concerns that it was serious or life-threatening. Um, which, looking back, I thought, you know, I spent some time with the Lord. I think that's what was best for our family. I think if Ezra had struggled for days and days and days and it had been a scary we, you know, if it had just been a long stretch of hard, scary times with him at the hospital, that would have been really devastating to our hearts and hard on Ezra. And so in God's goodness, Ezra really was fine up until the last two hours of his life. And before it got to be a part where doctors were having hard discussions with us, Ezra was already unconscious. So. We feel totally confident in the fact that Ezra did not experience any pain or didn't struggle at the end, even though it was really hard to watch. Um, so we're very, we see God's goodness in the details of his passing. And we're just still, you know, having those um, reflections um, on what happened and why it happened and we do know we are believers in Christ that and it says in God's word that Ezra's days were ordained before one came to pass like when God knit Ezra together in his birth mom's womb he had a specific plan and all his days that he would live on this earth were already determined and so this is not a surprise to the Lord this was Ezra's life plan and um so we trust um we trust in god and you know we've experienced loss before i don't know if we've shared we never got to an introduction video because all this happened um while our daughter was here a baby shower and that was also just god's goodness and everybody being here in town at the same time so we could support each other so our firstborn daughter, Elaine, was still born um, a year into our marriage. So we have experienced the depth of the loss of a child. Um, Ezra's death is definitely different because we had, you know, with Lainey, we were devastated. Um, but her life had not yet started. And so all of our grief was just about that life lost and all the unknowns but with Ezra there's not those unknowns that we knew him intimately so 
the depth of grief is very different. But I lost my daddy 10 years ago and we walked through that. So our hearts are able to grieve with hope because God has proven himself faithful before. And just because we say God is faithful and we trust him doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt really bad. But we do grieve with hope. We know Ezra is in heaven. Um, and maybe in the weeks to come, we can kind of unpack scripturally why we say we know that, why we believe that, um, but we do. So this video is just to tell you that we're here and though we're hurting and every moment is challenging, we are putting one foot in front of the other and our kids are doing the same. Um, so we've talked about what this means for our channel. I think if you go back and watch my very first Welcome to Oso Farm, at the end I talked a lot about how I wanted this channel to be an encouragement for people that are not just parents, but full-time caregivers. And so, as you pray for us, that's the biggest void, is having a medically fragile child meant that Ezra needed us every second of the day not just to love him, but to physically take care of him. And so the void of that, just the time and space that we now have, is just wrecking our hearts. So as you pray for us, just pray that in the dailyness of life, that we um, grieve well, that we love each other well, that we you know, see the needs of our kids and that others that love us, that are in our community here, see our needs and, you know, that God is honored by Ezra's life. And I'm sure there will be times when we can unpack that with you, all of the beautiful things that God has done through Ezra and in his complicated, challenged eight years of life, he changed hearts. And so we are forever grateful that God allowed us to be his family. And I think all of us, even our kids, will move forward once we get past just the enormity of grief, professing that. And I think we have a lot of praying to do about, okay, Lord, what's next? Like, what what do we do now? And what? Um, how does Ezra's purpose live out in our life beyond his life here on earth? And so I'm excited to see in the coming months and years what how God uses Ezra in all of our lives. Because I know it's going to be a huge testimony. So Revelation 12:11 says, that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the power of our testimony. So we overcome this because the blood of the Lamb, meaning that God overcame death. And so because of that, I know my Ezra's alive and the power of our testimony. So we'll overcome by constantly reminding ourselves of God's faithfulness of our testimony. So in the coming weeks, we will share normal life, but know that even in like a grocery haul, there may be times when we get choked up um, missing him. In the month of May, we won't have a grocery haul because our community of friends here has blessed us with meals through most of May, and so um, we won't really thankfully have a need to think about food. Um, some things this summer we're going to be focusing on are a home remodel. In God's good timing, our, a property that we owned in Houston is going to sell in the middle of the summer, and so we're going to 
be able to remodel our little um, property here and so that will be a very welcomed distraction so we'll try to film some of that and um, I'm not going to commit to we're gonna post on this day and this day I think we'll ease back into picking up the camera and showing life but we just wanted you to know that we really appreciate all of the comments and the thoughts and um, Brian is going to attach the video that we made that we shared at Ezra's service. Um, and so I think as you watch that, you'll just see the depth of joy and love that our sweet Ezra Luke brought us. So again, thank you. And like we always say, it would be our honor and privilege to pray with you. So if you would like to leave a comment below, um, really appreciate that. If what you hear in the background, now that it's really windy. <laughs> um, one of our sweet friends in Houston. Thank you, Dawn. Sent us a wind chime. And her husband passed several years ago. And she was one of our Sweet, sweet widows that we helped just look after and um, she sent us this wind chime that uh, we didn't expect she just she just wanted to bless us and told us her story about her wind chimes and how it reminded her of her husband and it's hanging right now by Ezra's room uh, right out his window and I mean the wind has been blowing since I put it up
You. 